The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to recognize how word choices, imagery, and sound devices affect mood, meaning, and theme. Hi, I'm Charlotte, and welcome to this series of lessons called Studying Poems. Today we will focus on the elements of style, tone and atmosphere as they apply to poetry. By the end of this lesson you should be able to identify the use of poetic language to create style, tone and atmosphere, name the poet's style, tone and atmosphere and comment on emotion in poetic writing. Understanding the concepts of style, tone and atmosphere will not only help you when studying poetry, but also in comprehension tests and literature. Now let's begin right away by looking at an excellent South African poem. It's by a poet that we have looked at in previous lessons, Mungani Wali Serote. Every one of us throbs footsteps inside the chest of the earth, for we belong there. The earth is always tight-lipped, but only talks to itself, perturbed by its throbs. Each of us will answer when the worms dig in and out of us for the truth, below the earth. This poem is an example of free verse poetry. Can you remember what free verse poetry is? Free verse poetry follows no set structure. One of the reasons that I can classify this poem as free verse poetry at first glance is because there are no rhyming words in the poem at all. Now let's look at the structure of the poem more closely. In terms of structure, this poem is quite simple. Three stanzas consisting of three lines each. Do you notice how the poet makes use of enjambment to ensure that the three lines flow into one sentence per stanza. Enjambment is the practice of running a phrase or sentence over the end of one line into the next without a punctuated pause. If we look at the content of each stanza, we notice that the poet makes a statement in stanza one. In stanza two, he clarifies his statement. And in stanza three, he leaves the reader with a thought. So if you were asked to comment on the structure of this poem in a test or exam, your answer could be something like this. This poem consists of three stanzas that are each made up of a sentence. The first stanza introduces the idea that we all belong in the earth. The second stanza clarifies this statement and the final stanza leaves the reader with something to consider. Next, we will look at the style of language the poet uses. In my opinion, he has used everyday language. In other words, the way people would normally speak. Words such as everyone and expressions such as tight-lipped are used in conversations by us all. The sentences are not overly complicated and they make up one qualified statement each. For example, the idea that is conveyed in stanza one is that we all have part in the earth and we belong on it. It is our place. Let's look at a definition of style before we decide what the style of this poem is. Style is the manner or way a writer expresses meaning in language, how a writer says what he or she says. If you have to comment on the style of this poem, you could write or say something like this. Sedoti uses a simple, everyday spoken style of language. His word choices are communicative and uncomplicated, and his sentences state his meaning directly to the reader. 
this explanation of style covers quite a few important points. We have covered how the writer or poet, in this case Sorotti, has said what he says in terms of sentences, word choices and register. When you are asked to comment on the style used in poems, you are studying these are things to look for. Often questions like these are for three or more marks, so make sure you give a detailed answer. Now I would like to take a look at the tone of the poem. Here is a definition of tone. The tone of a writer is his or her emotional attitude contained within the writing. We need to establish Sorote's attitude towards the subject matter and the audience in this poem in order to define the tone of the poem. So let's take a look at the poem again and see if we can determine the meaning. What is Sorote's message? He firstly talks about how we all belong there, inside the chest of the earth. And then in stanza two, about the earth being secretive and tight-lipped. In the third stanza, he refers to how we will all be responsible for what we did in our lives after we die, when he says, the worms dig in and out of us for the truth. So his message is that we cannot hide from the actions of our lives and that eventually we will have to answer for what we did. But how does this help us to find the tone? Well, by determining the message of the poem, we can establish Sorote's attitude towards the subject matter. Remember this, it will help you to determine the tone of any poem you are studying. Tone can be determined by considering the poet's message and imagining how the line would be read aloud. For example, think about how you would read the last stanza of this poem aloud. Each of us will answer when the worms dig in and out of us for the truth below the earth. Here is the answer that I would give if asked to comment on the tone of this poem. The tone of this poem is one of warning. Sedoti is advising the reader to take care with the way we live our lives so that the truth of our lives is acceptable when it is exposed publicly. I hope you have enjoyed analysing this poem with me and have a clearer understanding of how to answer some of the questions you might find in your poetry tests or exams. For the rest of the lesson we will focus on the mood or atmosphere of poems. Let's look at a definition of atmosphere. Atmosphere sets up the reader's expectation of what is going to happen. The terms atmosphere and mood really refer to the same thing. So when you are trying to determine the mood or atmosphere in a poem, think about the feeling that you get about what is going to happen next as you read the poem. Now let me show you an example of a situation that you may have been in before to explain. Two of your friends have been going out for a while and now they are starting to argue about everything. What feeling do you get about what is going to happen next? You probably get the feeling that they are about to break up and their relationship is going to end. So the mood of their conversation is one of disaster waiting to happen. Although it may be easy to get a sense of the mood or atmosphere in a poem, it may be more difficult to put it in words. Here is a tip. Describe the mood or atmosphere of a poem in terms of emotions. So when you are asked to explain the mood or atmosphere of a poem, think about the feelings or emotions you get about it. Now let's look at a piece of poetry by Cecil Day Lewis. Walking Away by Cecil Day Lewis. It is 18 years ago, almost to the day. A sunny day with the leaves just turning. The touchline's new rules. Since I watched you play your first game of football, then, like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, go drifting away. 
behind a scatter of boys. The atmosphere or mood that Day Lewis has created here is one of nostalgia. Nostalgia is a yearning for a past period. The poet feels that he is losing his son and he is remembering a happier time when his son was younger and he watched him play his first football game. If we look at this simile, like a satellite go drifting away, we get the feeling that the son that once had a place in this world revolving around his family was somehow forcibly removed and is now lost to strangers. So our understanding of the atmosphere of a text relies on the feelings we get when we read it. Let's recap what we've looked at so far today. We've examined the style, tone and mood or atmosphere of certain poems. It is important to be able to recognize these things when you are analyzing a poem. Try this activity to practice your skills. Try to identify and explain the mood or atmosphere of these two lines. The trees are in their autumn beauty. The woodland paths are dry. In our next lesson, we will look at how various poets deal with the issue of love in their poetry. See you then. Bye-bye.